Okay, we're ready to stitch it up a notch with half square triangles. Cool thing about half square triangles is that you can never just make one. You actually have to make two when you're making them. The other cool thing about half square triangles is that they're not actually made with triangles. They're made using squares. The trick to figuring out how big of the squares you need to cut is by simply adding 7 eighths of an inch to the finished size of your square. So in this case, I want my squares to finish at two inches, meaning two and a half inches unfinished. So I would simply cut two squares that are two and seven eighths inches square. Now I take my squares, and on a lighter fabric, I'm gonna use my ruler to draw a line from point to point. I use this, it's called the Ultimate Marking Pencil. It's just a graphite pencil that washes out in water, and it uses a very, very nice fine line to mark. You also might want to actually do your marking on sandpaper. Um, you want to do that simply because it will grip your fabric and not allow it to distort out of shape. Marking on the bias, which is this diagonal line, can distort your block. So keep that in mind when you're marking. So now our pieces are marked. Let's take them to the sewing machine and start stitching a half square triangle. Really quickly, how this works is I'm going to line up the two pieces and I'm actually going to stitch a quarter of an inch away from the center marked line. Then I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch away on the opposite side from the center marked line. And then after that's complete, we'll cut them apart and have two finished half square triangles. Let's stitch this together and see. First run through your scrap charger and end with your needle in the down position. Then you want to line up your blocks perfectly. Line up your two pieces perfectly. And you're going to start stitching because you're a quarter of an inch away from the center line. You're going to start stitching over here. But just make sure that you're lining up your presser foot even with this corner. So this is actually kind of the opposite of what we've been doing. We've been watching this side. Now we're going to watch this side like a hawk to make sure that we stay perfectly on that line. Just start stitching slowly. Because it's on the bias, your pieces may want to shift apart right there at the bottom. Just make sure that you keep them right in alignment. Okay, so we've stitched our first line of stitching a quarter of an inch away from this marked line. You want to use your ruler to just double check that you are very accurately staying on that straight line. If you're not, please take the time to rip that seam out and stitch it again. So now we're going to line up again on this line, stitching a quarter of an inch away or a half of an inch away from this line. Half square triangles are kind of cool in the sense that you're not actually working with a triangle shape. You're working with two squares and for every two lines of stitching or two squares, you get two half square triangles. So here's the finished block. As you can see, there's two lines of stitching and then your center mark line. Now you're going to line your ruler up with one of the lines of stitching and trim this apart. You want to cut on the line that you marked with your pencil, so straight down the center. Now you really don't have to use your rotary cutter to trim these apart. You could just use a pair of scissors and cut them by hand. It really doesn't matter. So now you have two half square triangles. You want to take this to your ironing board and press the seams open 
first finger press very very carefully because these seams are on the bias they're going to want to pull and twist out of shape so finger press first and then take them to your iron it's also very important once they're pressed open fully to lay them back on your mat and measure them with one of your big rulers that you use to cut out your fabric wet this is going to ensure that it was cut and finished at the exact correct size so this block was supposed to finish unfinish technically at two and a half inches so that when I piece this into a block it will finish at two inches and this is dead on it so that's terrific two half square triangles for every single half square tri triangle unit here's some examples of blocks that you can make with half square triangles all of these blocks are made to the exact same specifications as the nine patch box we've been working on so each piece finishes at two inches so that the total block finishes at six inches as you can see this is created using six half square triangles so you really only have to piece three units to make as many half square triangles as you need here's another cool block you can create with half square triangles it's created using three and three blocks of each color in a solid here's kind of a variation of a pinwheel block using four half square triangles and here's what I call a donut block with four half square triangles in all corners there's a lot of things that you can do with half square triangles we even have a half square triangle basic blue variation. Let's go check out that next.